Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the next video of our virtual trade show. My name is Szymon Gumułka, and together with Daniel Oszczenda, we will be talking today about the IOLink interface. So in today's video, we will be talking about the IOLink interface. We have about 20 minutes, it's of course, uh, not enough to uh, explain all uh, information about this interface. But we decided that three words, there are three words uh, which are describing very well IOLink interface. The first one is universal. Daniel, what does that mean that IOLink is universal interface? Yeah, the universal is a very key topic uh, for the IOLink because since IOLink was introduced uh, quite many years ago, because we introduced first devices 10 years ago, the idea is was created to universal open interface. It means it's independent from any kind of manufacturer. It's open interface, so it doesn't matter what kind of PLC, what kind of network you are using. The IO-Link interface is compatible with that. So if you use, like we have in our example, the Siemens PLC, or if you use another PLC from Alan Bradley, from uh, Mitsubishi or whatever different uh, kind of PLC, you can use always the IO-Link. So the universal means on one side you can use this technology with different kind of PLC, different kind of manufacturers. Nowadays this is also mm -hmm. quite widely used also with some PC-based uh, communication, which we will talk a little bit later. But of course the universal, on the other hand, means that IO-Link replaces a lot of different connecting technology. In the past, we had a several different uh, wiring methodologies, parallel wiring, RS-232 interface, analog interfaces. In many cases, currently, IO-Link replaces those technology, gives you the one common interface to connect different mm -hmm. devices to the same model, to the same PLC using the same wiring technology, which we will talk later about when we talk about the easy. But as a small reminder, we are always using simple free wire cabling to connect all kind of devices. As an example, let's take a look on RS-232 in the past RFID system. Now is the complete RFID system with IO-Link interface. So you can connect very easily to your master model any kind of device using one universal standard interface. And this is from one side. Universal, thanks to IOLink, Shimon, is also create possibility to create some universal devices. Yes, exactly. It's a huge trend of the actual innovative automation to create special units, special products with many functionality on board. And the, one example of it is this sensor is the BOS21 universal sensor is the optical sensor, but with which type of the optical sensor? Anyone. It's the diffuse sensor, diffuse with background suppression, the retroreflective and true beam sensor, emitter and receiver in one housing. And uh, what more about the functionality? It's the PNP, NPN, normal close, normal open, with some additional functionality like a, uh, environment um, testing. We get the information how dirty is the window, how long this sensor is working, how long this sensor is working from last maintenance. And in this sensor we are using only three wires to, to get this information in our uh, steering system. It's, it's amazing. It's the one example. We have of course a lot uh, more examples. Uh, at this moment I am thinking about the BCM sensor, is the ball of condition monitoring session, sensor. If you will be uh, following our social media, probably you will find another video about this sensor. And we are talking about idea where we have one unit, one housing, and five, six, eight sensors on board with different functionality. For example, you will have, for example, the, you can measure the temp temperature, pressure, humidity, velocity, uh, and many, many others. And of course, when we are talking about the universal of IO-Link, we cannot forget about the safety application, right, Daniel? Yeah, exactly. This was the topic which I just would like to mention, which you can see on the Sour Cube, which is next to the Shimon. Uh, we have a great example when you see connected different kind of technologies. Uh, on my side, you have connected typical, classical IO-Link devices, classical automation like linear transducers, IO modules, and so on. But on that side, we have our application, when you see the safety hub, this hub with the yellow housing, when you can see you have the possibility to connect different kind of safety devices. What is important? 
Universal in that case means that you use the standard safety PLC. Standard in that case means is the PLC have to be equipped with the safety function. But in, as a universal, you connect traditional safety devices. So if you use any kind of standard light curtains, safety button, or safety switch to protect some uh, housing, or magnetic field sensors, and different <coughs> kind of safety devices, all of them could be connected to such kind of module and collect safety signal and send directly to the safety PLC. So it's not necessary to have separate unit to control safety devices and separate unit to control the automation system. So this is one great advantage and create this, this is why this solution is so universal. So you can combine different technologies, as I said before, and also different areas of application. In that case, traditional automation and also safety application in one PLC, in one way of cabling in, in principle. Because the idea is to make this simple and the next step, what we are we're talking, is the smart. Yeah, yeah is the smart, is the second keyword, which is describing IOLink very well. And what, what does that mean? Uh, IOLink using very simple wire connection. We have only one cable dedicated for the communication. And through this cable, we are sending the special uh, information uh, in two directions to the sensor and from the sensor to the PLC, for example. And using such communication, we can, for example, get the information about the condition of the sensor. Uh, there is a lot of uh, possibilities. We can measure the, the, the last maintenance uh, date. We can uh, get the information about the expected lifetime of our uh, units, for example. And um, another function is uh, the parameterization, because thanks to the IO-Link, we can parameterize our sensors uh, in the real, real process. We cannot stop our machines. We can change each parameter just that. Uh, when it is um, very important, uh, when we can use um, this function uh, everywhere and anytime when we have to uh, adjust our machines because we change uh, our production. For example, we got the new order from the customer because the actual trend of some, uh, some customers uh, were changed. Uh, we are observing such be behaviors of the customers um, every day, in, uh, I suppose, in every branch. In the past, with standard uh, machines, uh, without the IO-Link communication, we have to send uh, the, the guy from the maintenance, for example, to the each sensor, uh, probably with the manual and this person should be responsible for adjusting some parameters in the machines. Of course, uh, is the situation when we are was wasting a lot of uh, time and we cannot uh, discuss about the, the, the efficient process um, of our manufacturers. Today, thanks to the IO-Link, uh, we can change everything, change everything, every parameters directly from the PLC. And uh, today we are talking a lot of about uh, digital application where we are connecting, for example, IT systems with our hardware uh, installations. If we have IOLink, it's not a problem to get the information from the IT systems like SAP, for example, send it directly to the PLC and get the new information. Hey, let's uh, reparametering uh, all units in our uh, production line. When we are talking about today modern innovating automation, uh, we are quite often talking about digitalization, uh, IIoT, Industry 4.0 in different wording, but always we are talking how to change our production, some smart production, smart factories, how to make our production uh, smarter, how to get more, much more information out, uh, out of our production. So if we are thinking about such kind of solutions, the IO-Link is a great basement which you can use to get out a lot of information out of your factory, to collect information about current status of your sensors, not only information directly from the PLC. Thanks to IO-Link, you have access to the simple sensor on the end of your line. You can check the status of the sensor, collect all those data in your external database, make an analyze, make some visualization, uh, like we showed uh, in our previous uh, video about the condition monitoring and with our uh, BCM sensor you can create some dashboard, you can create analyze of your factory to have the possibility for future diagnostic and future development of your business to really be able to work with the smart way of your factory. And 
This is possible because our masters uh, communicate not only over the industrial network, but they supply you also digital information uh, for IT world. Uh, we use JSON for that. So with JSON protocol, you can get those data to the, any external uh, database. So IOLink is the great basement if you think about digitalization, IOT, and any kind of smart production, smart factory. And of course, as I said, this is also important that this is easy. Yeah, it's easy. It, uh, I would like to add only that, in my opinion, today we are delivering not the standard uh, signals, but we are deliver de delivering data yeah. for the IT systems. Uh, and what about the easy? I remember times where I was a young guy and the computers uh, were very easy in, in our country, in our world. Uh, there were a lot of different uh, communication ports on each uh, PC computer. We have the LPT, COM, PS2 and many, many others. Today we have only USB. Uh, everything is simple. USB is simple. We are using it um, to connect any type of uh, parallel, of uh, peripheral uh, units. Uh, Ioling is something like a USB for uh, industrial automation. Uh, why? Uh, when Ioling was born, uh, the, the persons responsible for creating this type of uh, interface decided that Ioling will use the simplest, the, the, the cheapest cable available on the world. Which one, Daniel? Yeah. We are talking about free wire basing cable, which is widely used uh, to connect uh, simple sensors, binary sensors, so, and very often using this M, very common M12 connector to make the connection very easy and very fast. And if we are talking about this easy, the IO-Link could be very, all, is used very often to simplify also connection of simple bin binary sensor, because we are, we, are, we are talking about the smart connection using the smart sensor, but still in our factory, in many cases, we have simple sensors. To make it possible, we have created a wide range of different kind of I.O. hubs to connect digital signals from basic binary sensor or control some uh, actuators on our machines. So it helps you simplify your machine. It is possible, thanks to that technology, make your machines more modular. What does it mean? So the connection, except in place of parallel wiring or in place of connecting to each module, net inter industrial network, you can use this very simple free wire cable to connect to the IO-Link master, which is the main point in each uh, network which is using uh, IO-Link technology. The one port in such kind of module, you can connect the next IO module, so in place of two signals which was possible to connect only to this module. You can connect up to 16 signals to such kind of module. We have a wide range of such kind of models. In that, this form like this one in metal housing is one example. If you have less space, limited space, or a small sensor with M8 connectors, we have different solutions. With M8 connectors, with eight ports, four ports, on, or now we have also such kind of models with eight ports. Uh, and double signal thanks to four pins and connectors. And the maximum amount of inputs is, I think, currently 16 M8 port in one module. So this is our latest solutions which we can su supply to you. And what is also important, if we are talking about the easy and in somehow connection with the smart, is the diagnostic. Because if we are talking about this uh, application, if we are talking about those models, because we all almost all of our models are supplied with IP67 protection class. So it means you mount these models directly on the field. So what is important, on each model, you have clearly visible LEDs, which you can see on this model, like they show you the status of the communication. And what is important, it gives you diagnostic information. In any case, if you have some short circuit, for example, it is not interrupting your whole machine whole PLC, it is only affected one port. You have clear diagnostic information on such kind of port with a red, red LED displaying here. So your maintenance guy don't spend a time to finding simple break caused by short circuit, which is quite common mistake which happens on the machines. And it really simplify and make maintenance time shorter, much simple. So 
availability of your machine is much higher. So this is why it's not only easy because of connection, it's easy only also for maintenance people to help them to make the machine, the, the machine running much longer and much better. Yeah, I remember very well application when we reduced the, the, the time of the the time which was expect which was need to found the, the the shortcut from 55 four minutes up to the seven minutes thanks to the IODing because the, the maintenance guy get the information clear information here hey here is the problem and to, today thanks to the, the digitalization possibilities we can send uh, and connect IODing for example with CMMS system and get the information uh, about the uh, shortcut and send it, for example, via SMS uh, directly to the responsible person. So, uh, as I thought at the beginning, the 20 minutes is not so much to, to tell everything about the yeah. IO-Link, so we were preparing the Q&A session. So now is your time to, to, to sending us uh, the, the questions and our technical support will uh, giving you uh, answers so of them. So thank you, so our technical experts is waiting for you ask for a question, happy to answer. And of course, we are at your disposal if you have more questions even later. Thank you so much. Well, hello everyone and welcome again on the third day, third day of our webinars. So today's topic was uh, IOLink. And thank you very much to Simon and Daniel for the introduction as well. And thank you very much for joining us today. Okay. So as always, today now is the time when I'm going to be answering questions. So feel free to ask me everything. I see there are several questions that already arrived. So maybe I will start with just answering the questions. So, okay. The first question was uh, Richard's. Uh, thank you, Richard, for the question. And he asked us, is there dedicated software to get into the master unit for commissioning and diagnostics? Uh, well, Richard, uh, our masters that are using uh, the TCP IP protocol, just like Profinet and the uh, TCP IP for Alan Bradley, they got a uh, software loaded into the internal memory of the masters and they are available via via uh, the web servers. So just like you saw there on the small screens of the iPads on the station where Daniel and Simon were talking about, you are able to watch all parameters of the inputs and outputs of the masters and as always of the uh, internet di diagnostics. Well, uh, if it's about other questions, um, there's an internal diagnostics module that is available via uh, PLCs. You can get those information just asking the right addresses uh, of the uh, Profinet frame or your, uh, for example, of the interface you are using now. So uh, our master's got uh, a whole amount of diagnostics and every diagnostic module and diagnostic information is available on the manual. And if you've got other questions, I invite you to ask us uh, or, uh, everything. Just ask uh, a friend of us that is working uh, at the origin and he will even answer your question or maybe contact you with us, the technical team. So uh, I hope I answered the questions. And if you got some other uh, things that should be clarified, just feel free to, uh, to write us a comment so I'll be able to answer your questions. So let's move on. Um, Marek, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, you asked us, what is the safety class of the IOLing safety module? Uh, well, about the IOLink safety module, you can uh, see about it on our website. Uh, you can see what classes of the uh, safety categories and even the uh, SEAL, uh, SEAL classes uh, there are. So the SEAL safety class is free, is the highest, and the safety class uh, in the ISO norm, it's about four. So 
that's the highest class, you can connect actually everything to uh, that has the class four to gain the four, four class of the uh, of the safety class of the of your circuit. So uh, thank you for your question. Um, about Andrew questions, uh, how many data does iLink support at once? Uh, thank you, uh, Andrew. Um, about the iOlink, uh, at once you are able maximum to get uh, from the cyclic data, those are the par process data that are refreshed with every cycle time of your PLC or even of your computer. You have to, uh, the master provides those information and at once you can gain uh, maximum 32 bytes of information. But that's not all. You can ask the master or the master ask on your uh, order the sensor of other parameters and those are the parameter data. You have to ask them so those are asynchronous uh, data and you, they can provide you with up to 255 bytes of information. So uh, that's the whole amount of parameter, uh, parameter or data that are available via IOLINK. Uh, and uh, now moving on to Carol's uh, question, he asked us, what is the transmission speed of IOLINK? Well, the fastest transmission speed of IOLINK is uh, described for two bytes of data transmission, and it is about 230 kilobytes per second. So that's a lot in my opinion. And uh, it's necessary to uh, mention that are, there are two now uh, working the revisions of uh, IOLINK. Uh, and this is the first and the first point first version of IOLINK. Uh, mainly the second revision is faster. So you can gain information in about 30 millisec milliseconds for, uh, for uh, some modules that you can find on our uh, site. So, feel free to just watch our, uh, our website. So let's move on. Move on. Mm. Uh, Adam, uh, you ask us, how can we configure each plug input on IOing board? I mean, how can we choose? Uh, will be there a digital sensor or analog one? Uh, about the IOing master. Uh, IOing master uh, that we provide to you, you can configure every port and every pin of the communication pin uh, to what you want. So the second pin, it can be uh, even configured into an output or an uh, input of PNP and ORNC. So we can switch uh, in this. The third pin, the third pin, can be configured as well into IOLink. But uh, our module does not got, uh, for now on, an analog input. You have to use an analog module that is connected to the IOLINK master. So uh, you just configure them, just sending the parameter data to the module. So you just connect to the place of the address and set there a value. The value uh, is then interpreted by the module just to switch uh, the port function. All the parameters are described in the manual uh, of every module. So feel free to see, uh, just to download the manual from our site, or even uh, we can support you with some uh, support of technical support of our uh, colleagues. We can uh, connect via TeamViewer, so feel free to connect, contact us. Uh, thank you very much for your question. Um, Frantisek uh, asks us, um, our SIL class, when we, we are Ivoni Safety Hub. Um, may I ask you to specify your question? Because I'm not sure uh, about the SIL class uh, you're asking for. Uh, I mentioned the SIL class is about free, uh, the SIL class value is free, so it's the highest one. Okay, let's move on to other questions. 
Well, uh, looks like I answered all your questions for now on. Feel free to uh, update me with other questions. I'll be here for, for a minute uh, and talking to you. Well, about uh, IO-Link. Oh, Martin, uh, you updated us with the question. Safety question: If we have two area of protect but two different different areas, can I use BNE uh, or two? Because uh, if one input is active, will be will be the react of the BN, BNI. If uh, one of these inputs uh, is will be active of your safety uh, sites, well, uh, the the BNI will uh, will connect to your pro PLC and send us information. The information you can just uh, process in the way you want using the safety uh, OBs. So if you write uh, down a, fun a safety function, the master will uh, process the data and the com communication will be working in the way you want. So just uh, if you got some speci specified questions, just ask us. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Jacob, uh, thank you very much for your question. If you collect eight IOLink devices into one IOLink master, will be the traffic in the profit network greater in comparison to the situation when you have only one device in the same single IOLink master? Yes, of course. Uh, the profinet frame the master sends to to your uh, to your plc depends on the amount of information you want to retrieve so if you configure your uh, profinet profinet master for example in tia you just attain slots where there will be some other modules for example ioling modules safety modules and uh, depending on the configuration the profinet frame will change. It will expand or it won't. So uh, if there's a, if you got a lot of sensors, for example, sending 32 bytes information each, the frame will be, for example, eight times the length of the process data. So you can surely imagine the uh, profinet frame will be greater. So uh, I'm, I, I will, uh, I wish I would uh, just fu uh, fully uh, fully explain everything for now, on, but uh, you know we got uh, uh, not, not the full amount of time, so just feel free to ask our colleagues and we will uh, just support you with the lot of information you want. So thank you very much, Jacob. And uh, let's move on to other questions. Looks like for now on, those are every, every question for now on. If you want to uh, ask us everything, just write down your question. I will be uh, sitting here for one minute uh, and uh, waiting for your question. And uh, just using this minute, I would say about the IOLink. Um, about the IOLink, uh, it's the first thing I just, after my studies, I was able to do at Baluf. So, uh, yeah, it is a very great thing for me working with IOLink uh, products and just to see how it everything develops in the direction of, of uh, the third, fourth generation of uh, industry. So uh, I really await of the way how to make it everything faster using the new 5G. Uh, LTE communication and see how the Internet of Things, industrial Internet of Things, will work to the, together with IOLink. I can provide you with information. We were working on the new BCM, uh, Balf Condition Monitoring Sensor, uh, how to gain those information, how to send them to uh, really uh, robust databases and how to connect to the database from every place of the Earth just using cloud computing. So feel free to ask us everything. And I see there's no uh, there's no other question. Oh, 
Uh, Martin, Martin, uh, you came up with the question. Okay, thank you. Uh, if I have two different area to manage, I need to be an I. Uh, well, it depends on uh, the safety classes of those areas. If you got uh, two separate classes, for example, one area needs only the second class and the other area needs the fourth class, you need uh, two BNIs because uh, the BNI class is uh, just like the whole system class, it's just like the lowest class you are able to connect. If you got two separate areas, you can connect them into one BNI if the, you got uh, if you can use all the slots, it only depends on the uh, on the uh, algorithm you write down in the safety OB. So uh, I'm not sure if I fully answered your question. If you need a clarification, just feel free to ask your colleagues uh, from Baluf uh, that are working at your region. They will surely uh, answer your question and, for example, provide you with uh, fu fully uh, described, uh, fully fully described templates. So, uh, I wish uh, I wish we can just answer every question. So, thank you very much, Martin. Okay, Jacob, you came up with another question. Which communication protocol is faster, IRING or Profinet? Uh, for example, uh, I use only digital sensor. Well, it is, um, to clarify, you cannot compare IOLink to Profinet. IOLink uh, is an interface just like um, analog uh, interface. It is for the communication of sensors. If you want it to compare to Profinet, you have to uh, you have to uh, see, watch Profinet as an interface, industrial interface, just like communication between uh, another computers. For uh, uh, IOLink, IOLink strictly can work with Profinet. So um, to connect IOLink modules. Even though you need uh, IOLink masters to you uh, using your uh, PLC, so to compare it with Profinet, uh, surely Profinet is a Siemens rated industrial uh, interface and it works great with Siemens. But uh, to be honest, uh, IOLink is not as fast as Zim as Profinet and the frame. Can, is not uh, previously predefined by Siemens like Profinet it is. So if you want to compare it together, it's not the greatest way. So uh, if you need some uh, further information about us, feel free to contact us and we will uh, just sit down with you and run the comparison with uh, IOLink. So, I hope I answered the question. And uh, if you need some clarification, feel free to ask us. Let's see. Okay, looks like uh, now all the questions are answered. And I hope uh, you, are, uh, you, you enjoyed today's uh, session. If you need some clarification about the IOLink uh, interface, the IOLink comparison with other interfaces, or just the clarification why IOLink is not uh, a great, comp why it's not a great comparison to compare IOLink with industrial interfaces, uh, feel free to ask us. Uh, every branch of Baluf worldwide is now working because of the current uh, situation uh, remotely. We are available for you uh, via phone and email, and the webshop is working 24 hours uh, a week. So uh, feel free to ask us and everything. I hope uh, today was a great day and uh, 
everyone uh, learned something new or maybe re rewind his knowledge. And see you tomorrow. Tomorrow's topic will be machine vision. So uh, stay tuned and have a nice day.